All right, hello, and welcome back to Watch a Real Composer Write Music in Sibelius. This is episode 10. We are really, really getting to the getting to the end here. We're just about finished with the with the first draft. We are going to basically finish these this this. We've got a guitar part and three met three bars of bass to write, and that's essentially it. Eight bar of excuse me, seven bars of guitar, three bars of bass. Uh, maybe three and a half through four bars of bass and we have all the musical material the rest of the job is editing and and making sure everything sits nicely and thinking about big picture stuff like textures and transitions and 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 yeah that type of stuff which is gonna be super fun that might take an episode maybe two episodes uh let's see if we can straight up finish this today right here right now you and me let's do cool all right let's see what we have so far get my ear going and let's go Jesus, that's that's pretty weird. That's pretty weird, you guys. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> oh no, thanks. No, no, not a second time, please. We're, let's finish it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Okay. So after we finish the material, there's definitely spots I want to go back and look at and and make sure it's doing the best, it, being the best it can be. I really wanted to just get through, get as much of the the material out as I can, and then we can really elevate it. A lot of it is super good already, and I, and I love it already. And I think the only thing we really need to do is make sure that those are the best they can be, make them better if we can, and set them up in the best way possible as well. Cool. Good stuff so far. So we are back here. The first thing I kind of heard that I would like to do is right here in 
the guitar part. I feel like we can have some some really fun stuff happening. Uh, actually, there's a, another part here. Yeah, I feel like we can have a little bit more movement in the guitar here. Let's let's go on. Let's see what's going on here. Just an eighth note, something. Okay. Hmm. What about ba ba da da? What if this is a D? That could be fun. Let's see how that sounds. Just one note. I'll change two notes. Okay. I like that better. If that's a lot of ease, though, that is a lot of ease. What if they make that a C? What if okay, this might be. It's not too bad. Let's see how that sounds. No, I didn't like it as much. What if that's a triplet? Not that type of triplet. Oh, what if it's that type of triplet? Nah, I want to go with the first idea first. Yeah, that goes. Okay, so ba da. Or is that a jump of a fifth? We can do a little fifth jump like that, or a fourth jump. That would be really easy on the strings. If we're on this D, say, let's say that's on the B string. Could be fun. Ah, nah, nah, not quite. Okay, that's kind of neat. We kind of have this jump up a fourth and then down uh, a step and then up a fourth and then down a step. Oh, but that uh, then we're also hitting an F there in the bass. We're hitting a G there. Uh, the G is in our ear from the vocals. Okay, maybe we won't make it an exact thing, but we still have this jump of a fourth object that's kind of hanging around which i like b flat c we make this a d we can keep that motion up here with this triplet we can keep that jump of a fourth okay i think that might do it for this one this little part
okay, okay. Cool. That's definitely what needed to happen there. Was it? Was it? <laughs> we have an F in the voice. D. Okay, like a nice big six or a big three. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, that is. No, nope. Gosh. Multiple clefs. Thought that was a D. Ugh. All right. So we have an F here, we have an F here, we have a B here, and we have a D here. Yeah, we're outlining a diminished chord. That's what's happening there. What if we... What if it's like that, instead of a diminished chord? parallels somewhere. The B there. Hmm. Maybe not. Somewhere moving to that DF sounds a little funky. Not in like a good funky. I think so, actually. Okay. We got an F, we got a D. A. Hmm, little D minor seven chord thing happening there. Okay. Let's see how that resolve lands. Resolution lands. leaves the I'll listen to it again. I'll listen to it from back here.
E. B. Cool. I think that's going to sound pretty nice. Pretty, pretty sweet. I'm not totally sold on the rhythm here. I do like that we are having these things happen in between, but I also feel like maybe the vocal line is being a teensy bit convoluted right here, um, which might be fine if this locks in really nicely, which I think it might because, you know, we're locking in the rhythm, uh, doing the same exact rhythm, and uh, voice leading seems to check out just fine. Yeah, let's see what, let's see what we got. Okay. What if we make this kind of doing a callback to the butta in the very beginning? Right, butta, right there. Little teeny, the teeniest object that I'm doing the teeniest little reference to. <laughs> this type of stuff is my favorite. This little, the adding these little tiny things in there. Could be fun. And look at that. The fourth motion is back, except now it's reversed. Love it. This is this is what I mean when I think about when I when I talk about, you know, composing objectively with with objects in mind. Obviously, that's not the colloquial way objectively works. I am trying to find a better term. But uh, but think in terms of objects, right? These little things, they they pop up and they help to make the piece, make the song you're writing feel cons feel uh, what's the word? Oh my gosh, words cohesive. Yes, they make them the piece feel cohesive. It it becomes self-establishing, self-referential. You are creating the rules by which the piece operates, and we get to teach the listeners what those rules are as they listen. So cool, so so cool. Okay, let's see how this feels. We got the E. We got the C. Let's play around with this a little bit. Front 
front of this tree. Okay, so uh, let's pull back. Tree is on C. When we have in that same beat the bass going from E D C. Uh, with a triplet there. So that feels pretty C chordy to me. <laughs> but uh, we can throw an A in there and make it uh, an A chord, an A minor chord um, instead, and just make that only happen through the through the guitar. Um, that could that could be cool. With a C E with a D up there. I think a C add nine. Nope. Didn't feel right. I'm trying to make this sound a little more interesting rather than just parallel thirds, but I feel like this is the thing that's gonna sound best. Yes, but it's too vanilla. It's too vanilla. What if we just add some dissonance? Okay. I don't hate that. That also sounds nice. Throwing the fifth there instead. It's just breaking up the parallel thirds just a wee bit. That E, make that an A. What if that's a B now? That is also quite nice. That B does match up with the, the F there. We got the E. That okay? That's that checks out quite quite nicely. Let's see how that sounds. More triplets. Probably gonna have a slur mark over a lot of this. No, 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 no. Also, no. Oh, that actually might be fun. Not as nice as I thought it was going to be. I, I was hoping that this B and this D would clash enough with the C to make it sound cooler. It, it did not. <laughs> oh, I remember. So my teacher had a really great idea uh, of having a sort of mock guitar line happening, looking, and then have the guitar do papa, doing this exact same thing. Oh, it goes down to E. And that goes to a dotted quarter. See how that should feel after looking. Do a little bit of backwards composition here too. All right, so but uh, maybe at the end of four. I 
actually think it sounded it may it sound better where it was. Oh, oh, right there. <laughs> Cool. Actually. C. B. A C. A D. A B. An F. Maybe an F sharp. I got some parallel fifths just to piss people off. AC. Um. Okay, that could be a fun. If we had those go down to six two, that's going down a third. Mm. Let's see how that sounds. That could be cool. Basic voice leading. these two, these three, actually. Thank you. 
F, that's also fine. Definitely some of y'all. No, nope. other way. Yeah. Let's see how that sounds. sounds cool the jump there and there. One more contrary motion. Hey guys, guess what? See this? Jump of a sixth. Jump of a sixth. Objects. Love them. Cool, cool, cool. We are we are really circling it now. It's really I think it's starting to come together a bit. Okay, I want to listen to the end. I think it might be time to really go in reverse. <laughs> Okay, this provides some opportunity, actually. How about we do some, like, something real weird? How about a uh, half note triplet here? Okay, uh, we are at D. Now these be some quarters. Thank you. 
just doing a sequel. <laughs> Maybe. Love that. fun.
Yes. False. Ah, uh, no. I would like the fermata, please. I think that's going to sound cool. God, I think that's it. You guys. That's it. Oh, nope, not that one. That one. That's it. There doesn't need to be anything there. I like the silence there. That makes sense. Oh, I love it. Okay, let's just hit this right from looking, and then we're going to take a listen to the whole thing, and that's it. Then next time is just editing and draft and stuff. One of some of my favorite parts, actually. That's good, I can call that. All right, three minutes, let's hear the whole thing, and then we will close out. This is so exciting. So, so exciting.
awesome. Great. Next time we are going to take a look at the editing perspective. We have most of the material down. Next time we're going to go through, do a lot of listening and see and make sure every single note is the best that it can be. Every single rhythm is feeling right and that the flow is good. We're going to look at the dynamics, make sure there are more of them, uh, maybe some articulations. I might take out the guitar and check out some of the or the bass and check out some parts just to make sure everything is hunky dory in terms of positioning. And yeah, like we are so close to the end. I think we are. We got one episode of this left, maybe two. So cool. This is so cool, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I have a, I guess I should tell you about my guide. I have a free guide. It's called Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody. It, you, in there, I give tips, like the ones I gave here about melodies with octaves and uh, some fun stuff. I made up a word, too, for it called, called harmomelodic substitution. That sounds fancy. It's not really a big deal, but it sounds like it. Good branding on my part. I guess. Anyhow, go and check that out at justrightmusic.com. There's a link down in the doobly-doo. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for being part of this journey. I'll see you for the penultimate or the final episode uh, next time. All right, I'm Avi, and don't forget to be awesome.